Right, oh, so this again is a variant on an old Tasmanian traditional fly. Very simple. Um, like I said before, I'm the great plagiarizer of flies. So it's it's very simple fly, brown woolly bugger, a brown woolly worm rather. Um, tying the chenille in the normal way. This uses copper wire, but I'm going to do something a little bit different with the copper wire. Um, in a minute. Some of the best fishing I've had with this has been a Bronte Lagoon. Um, but not as you'd probably expect. So most of the good fishing I've had with this fly has been in what's called the Broadwater. Most people would know what the Bronte Broadwater is. So the Bronte Broadwater, back in the day, some of the best tailing fishing you'd ever find. Probably still is. I haven't fished it for a long time. Three strands is because the peacock hurl I've got is absolute rubbish. Um, if you've got better peacock hurl, just tie in one or two. Righto, back to square one. Anyway, so the trick with this is just keep winding it forward. Um, with chenille, if you just keep stroking the fibres back as you go forward, that'll give you a bit more of a consistent body. I don't really know what this thing imitates. It might be a mud eye, it might be a mayfly nymph, it might be just something that's half an inch long and brown that trout eat. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, probably doesn't matter. You'd obviously fish it slowly. Yeah, slowly. Um, Figure eight it. Well, it used to be what was called the old Tassie pool, which you probably couldn't say in mixed company. But um, it was basically just a strip that long, so it was just a strip like that. If ever you watch Bill Beck fishing wet flies, that's the that's the origin of the great Tassie pool. Um, probably the greatest exponent of wet fly fishing in Tasmania would be Bill Beck. If there was one angler on the whole planet you needed to fish to save your life, it would be Bill Beck, I reckon. Right, oh, hackle tied in at the front, palmed hackle fly tied in at the front. I'm not sure, some people tie their hackles in at the back to palm or fly. I tie mine in at the front. So this is going to have a hackle at the front anyway, so when you wind it through it's just open, open turns. You can get another one out of it, do so. And then um, just have that hang at the back off the hackle pliers. Now, peacock and copper wire, twist them together. Mm. Like that. And then, this is what's gonna hold your hackle down. So you wind that back through. Mm. Nice open turns and just wriggle it side to side. Like yonder. Makes a nice head too. Well, the head will go in a minute. So there we blow, and then you can get rid of that. You could put a red tag on the end, I never did. Get rid of that. So that's the basis of the fly. Now in the in the description, I said to put a front hackle of grouse on it. Um, you mightn't be able to find grouse. It's it's a beautiful speckly type of feather. But what it wants is just a nice soft hackle. You might have an old hen hackle which has got really nice soft um, fibres in it. It's just movement. I mean the fish aren't sitting on the bottom going, oh that hasn't got grouse on it, I'm not going to eat that. Um, it's really just a bit of colour variation and a bit of movement. It's grouse partridge. Grouse is grouse. Is it? Partridge be alright? Um, if it was, yeah, yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, 
two different types of bird. They're a game bird. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, poms just love shooting them. Two ways of playing with grouse. If you're going to tie a traditional soft hackle fly, you tie it in by the tip. But I'm not, so I'm not going to. So I just tie it in by the stem. It's a fiddly um, feather to use, but it moves beautifully in the water. Mm. And you just really want a couple of turns and just give it a little bit if you can get that much out of it. Leggy. So leggy, buggy, hangy. Beautiful. Well, I'm not going to say that. There you go. You had to push some water, wouldn't it? That's a busy fly. Yep, it is. But it's got what I like in wet flies that are used as attractors. It's got um, a lot of depth of, of colour. Uh, when I tie the claret dabbler a bit later, I'll explain what I mean by that, that there's layers to it. Um, the Irish are all over it and have been for a long time. Um, there was a book I meant to bring up, which I forgot, I'm, unfortunately. It's probably the most influential book I've ever read on fly fishing. And it's called A Man May Fish by a fellow called Kings Mill Moore. Um, he was an Irish judge and he used to fish the locks of, of Ireland. Um, and it's, it's a great read, but it talks about the development of um, the Bumble series of flies, which are big water pushing lock style flies. But more importantly, it talked about the development of them and how why he had colour in them and what worked and what didn't. Um, so there we go, that's my version of the brown woolly worm. Um, I like the little contrast that the peacock gives through it. You can tie the peacock on its own through it, but after a couple of fish it just breaks and falls away. But if you twist it around the copper, it gives it a little bit more longevity. 